Hello, everybody. Welcome along to Sports Bet TV with me, Paul Alster. I'm looking ahead now. Today's three and four at Royal Ascot. It's been uh, a fascinating meeting so far with a number of uh, really memorable performances over the first couple of days. But uh, holding my hands up, those tips that I put up for the first two days haven't been uh, anywhere near as successful as I would have liked. Uh, Francesco Clemente was very well backed on day one, but he didn't run his race, nor did Charging Thunder at a big odds. And then on um, uh, today, on Wednesday, day two, uh, Prosperous Voyage just couldn't um, pick it up as I hoped. Uh, and then there was that huge gamble on Gali, who was very well backed uh, in the Hunt Cup, but he didn't really uh, run anywhere near as well as expected. So uh, a little bit disappointing, but that's the nature of the game. And uh, we're going to be looking for some really good value over the third and fourth days of the meeting. And I'm going to go straight on to the very first of those, which is going to be on Thursday, the 305 race, which is the King George V handicap on day three at Royal Ascot. It's over a mile and a half. There are 19 runners on good ground. And we're expecting the ground to remain good. Um, it has been dry on Wednesday. There could be showers, of course, but... I think generally we're talking good ground. Now the London Gold Cup race that was at Newbury last month is a race that will have quite a bearing on this because it was won by Burton Alley of Aidan O'Brien who's back for more and steps up in trip. Uh, he got up in a very tight finish. He's only gone up five pounds and he could easily be there or thereabouts. You've got Perfuse for Sir Michael Stout and Burglar for the Gosdens who are both making handicap debuts off marks in the 90s could potentially be pattern race horses. So market support for them will be interesting. While Charlie Appleby's Tagabawa has already been backed. Um, it won a mile and a half Kempton or weather handicap very easily on its reappearance. Has gone up 12 pounds though, but who knows? It might just be a genuine a group horse, but it makes its turf debut here and has to prove it can do it on turf, not just on the all weather. Another interesting one is Rafe Beckett's Davideo, a winner at Newmarket. Um, of a maiden last time out by Galileo. I think it'll relish the trip. And of course, uh, Rafe had that brilliant one too in the Royal Hunt Cup on Wednesday. Uh, I'm going to be backing two against the field. And um, one of those I've put up at the Out in Front service. And you can uh, check that out by checking the Patreon link just below. That's my premium service where I go into quite some detail and analysis with a lot more suggestions for you um, over the meeting, this meeting. and. Uh, going forward weekends and all the major fixtures, it's really good value. Um, so there's one I've put up there, um, but the one I'm suggesting for you here is actually the shorter odds of the two, but still a nice each way price, and it's called Wonder Legend. Uh, Wonder Legend is trained um, by James Ferguson and the man of Danny Musket. It's a See the Stars cult. Um, it was um, promising on its first two starts in Kempton Maidens, and then it won at Wolverhampton in April in a maiden. Um, it made its turf debut at Doncaster just um, 17 days later off 81 on soft ground and won really well. It won on the bridle by five lengths there and the second horse has won a sundown maiden since. Now it did look as if this could be a horse that's really going places. The handicapper didn't miss it. It's gone up 13 pounds but um, I think it could have been just a ridiculous blot on the handicap last time and I think it should still go very well off its revised mark. There could be more improvement to come and it really could be a group class horse. So 8 to 1 is um, Wonder Legend and that is a horse that I um, fancy to go really well here and I'll be backing that and one other um, uh, in the King George, the fifth handicap, the other one as a saver at much bigger odds. So that's the first race that I uh, have for you on Thursday. Now the second one is another huge um, handicap. It's the Britannia handicap um, off on Thursday at five o'clock, 30 runners on the straight course, all three-year-olds of course, and luck in running and the draw will play a very big part. Uh, lots of these could be improving faster than their handicapper is trying to hold on to them. I'm not going to go through too many at all here. I'm going to um, confide in you that there are two horses I'm putting up here. They're both very similar prices. One of them uh, I'm going to be backing uh, and I mentioned that one at out in front um, and it will have a, a really good chance I think. Uh, but the other horse I fancy here is a horse who 
is um, coming over from France for this race. It's called Bless, and it's trained by the French trainer Fabrice Chappé, and is the mount of Stéphane Pasquier. Always fascinating when the French come to handicaps uh, at the big meetings. They obviously do so because they feel they can gain something or their horses are not being um, properly um, judged on what they've done in France. So it is difficult to equate the French form with British form or Irish form, of course, but this Toronado coat really does have a touch of class. Um, and on a line through the top weight in this race, Finn's Charm, trained by Charlie Johnston, who also has quite a good chance, um, on the 2000 German 2000 Guinness second of Finn's Charm, I think that uh, Bless really does have a, a case of being well in. Um, he's run so well on his penultimate start, he was a very close fourth to a smart a horse called Viomi at uh, Longshaw in April. And then uh, last time out, it was a two and a half length third to the unbeaten Andre Favre train Columbia at the same track. Um, that was three and a half weeks ago. Now that really is very, very good form, but even better form was that um, earlier on, um, it was beaten only a nose by a horse called Mahaba Yasanafi. And that one has gone on to win the French 2000 guineas. So here you've got a horse beating the nose by a French 2000 Guineas winner, and it's running here off 93 in an Ascot handicap. Now, if that, I suppose it may have been flattered, you don't know, but surely that has to be pretty well in. And I think Bless is going to go really well. Um, the 365 are offering um, 25 to 1 each way uh, for Bless. Uh, in this race and um, I really do fancy that it is going to go very very well indeed. So that is the one I commend to you, my second uh, selection for day three Thursday at Royal Ascot. I'm moving on then swiftly to the fourth day at Royal Ascot and the first race I'm going to take you to is another big handicap, the Miles Sandringham handicap for fillies only this time and there are 30 runners and as you know um, um, on the straight course, the draw will play its part with fillies as well. Some of them can you know, be in and out of form sometimes, um, and you need that luck in running as well. They're betting six to one the field. Uh, they've gone very short, I think, on this horse, because I, I would have thought it would be 10 to one the field this race. But they've gone six to one the field, a 97 rated copies for the Gosdens and to Tory. Um, drawn 25. Um, you know, it's there on the basis of a, a mile novice stakes win on the all weather. I mean, you could get a more different challenge, but it's the Gosdens and De Tori. Uh, and apart from that one, they're betting um, the only other one that's less than 14 to 1 in the race is Aidan O'Brien's Jackie O, who was fifth in the Irish 1000 Guineas last time out. And that for me is um, very much uh, a stronger piece of form than Coppice. Now, once again, I'm backing two in the race. Um, you need two chances really in these big handicaps. Um, one I'm mentioning it out in front again, you can check it out if you join us there via Patreon on the link below the screen. But I do think that's a really good case here uh, for a horse called Sparks Fly, trained by David Lothnain and the man of Laura Pearson, who's really good value for her three pounds. She gets on very well with this horse as well. Now, this has been a real story, this horse. A massive improver, it's gone up two stone, 28 pounds, uh, for four wins on the bounce since April, all of them on soft or heavy ground, admittedly. Its latest win was at Windsor, where despite having rocketed up the weights, it still won by five and a half lengths in a competitive handicap, and that despite probably losing five lengths by swerving right across the track. I don't know why it did that. Horses often do that at Windsor, I don't know quite why it happens, but it's still one pulling a truck. I mean, it was an absolutely breathtaking win in the context of that handicap. Got up 10 pounds. Now, prior to April, this horse had only run on the all weather, had run five times and not shown a huge amount. Clearly, it is a horse that needs to be on turf. And the fact of the matter is, it's never been beaten on turf. It's four from four. And while its winds have come on soft and heavy, on pedigree, there's no reason to say it shouldn't run well on a much better surface. And it's drawn 10, uh, which should be okay, I think. Laura Pearson has won on it the last twice. And she claims that valuable three pounds. So at 28 to one each way for six places. Uh, that's with Bet365 at the time of this recording on uh, Wednesday early evening. 
then I think Sparks Fly has as good a chance as any in the Sandringham, and that will be one that I am uh, betting, along with my other uh, selection that I'm putting up and out in front. And then to my final selection on Friday, um, these three selections I'm giving you here at Sportsbed, and that is in the 610 race, another massive field. You know, I know I could very easily put them up in the stakes races where you have six or seven runners and say, you know, those are my selections, but I am trying to find you value at big odds because I know a lot of you aren't playing for big money. And as I've shown over the years and over the seasons that over the long run, I have been able to make it pay really quite nicely when um, putting forward big price horses at big meetings. So we're keeping the faith and on Friday at 6.10 in the five furlong Palace of Holyrood handicap, another cavalry charge, um, the betting seven to on the field and conquistador for George Bowie and Andrea Rizzetti is on a hat-trick after wins at Wolverhampton and Lingfield during the winter, but he's switching to turf, he's never won on turf and the betting 14 to one bar the one, ridiculous. Um, anyway, there are two horses that I'm looking at here, uh, again, I'm going to be back in two in such a big field to give myself a chance. One of them I'm putting up at out in front. Uh, but the shorter price of the two, actually, but still a very nice price, will be Hispanic. And Hispanic is trained by no lesser trainer than Aidan O'Brien. And you'll have Ryan Moore riding for you here on Hispanic. Now, this horse won on its third start as a juvenile at the Curra over five furlongs on yielding to soft ground in a maiden by eight lengths. Absolutely hacked up. And that was its first try at over five furlongs after two runs at six, where it had been third and fourth. So clearly it was indicating that five furlongs is preferred. But it still went back up to six furlongs at Doncaster in a listed race the time after. It was heavy ground, probably too heavy for it. Had every chance at the furlong pole and then just got tired in the last hundred yards and gave up second, eventually finishing fourth. This season it reappeared at York in a listed race over five furlongs. So they obviously understood that five furlongs seems to be the distance for this horse good to firm ground so they were happy to run it on a quick surface and it lost absolutely all chance at the start when it was the meat in the sandwich when the horses on either side both went in and basically just took him out it, if it had been rugby they would have both been sent for an early bath um so you can ignore that i mean it just it just didn't have a run it was quite stunned i think by getting hit on both sides uh, the handicapper has seen fit to drop it a pound to 97. Now it's drawn 30, hard under the stand's rails. That will be a good draw, I think. Um, and it could be helping this horse a lot. Um, and uh, it's only its second proper start at five furlongs, if you ignore the one where it was badly hampered last time. It's only other time it won very, very comfortably over five furlongs. I think this could turn into a good, classy group race sprinter. And so Hispanic is my choice in that hot handicap, the Palace of Holyrood, the 610, at Royal Ascot on Friday. So those are my four for you here at Sportsbet. Just to say again, if you are interested to find out about what other horses I'm fancying and out in front, you can check out the link uh, just below this screen. Let's keep our fingers crossed for a good run for our money over days three or four. I'll be back on Friday evening with my tip for Royal Ascot, the fifth and final day. And I hope you'll join me again uh, for more action at uh, the greatest uh, horse racing fixture in the world.